We will hear a phone conversation in which a woman talks to a public transport official about something she has lost. First, you have some time to look at questions one to four. Hello, City Transport lost property. How can I help you? Oh, hello. Yes, I'm、uh, calling about a suitcase I lost yesterday. I don't suppose I'll get it back, but I thought I'd try. Well, some people do hand lost items in, so you might be lucky. Let's put the details into the computer. Okay. Right. So let's start with a description of the suitcase. Okay. Well, it's small, and it's the type you can pull along on wheels. How about the colour? Yes,、uh, it's black, but not exactly plain black. It has some narrow stripes down it, sort of grey. Actually, no, they're white. Now I think about it. Okay, I'll just add that information. Now, were there any items inside it? Yes, I had a big bunch of keys in there. Luckily, my assistant manager has an identical set, so she's going out this morning to get some copies made. So, therefore, your office. That's right. My house keys were in my pocket. Thank goodness. Anything else? Um, there were a lot of documents, but they're saved on my laptop anyway, so、uh, they don't matter so much. But the thing I'm really worried about—I mean, I haven't even taken it out of the box yet—is a camera I just bought. That's really why I'm calling. I can't believe I've lost it already. I see. Well, let's hope we can find it for you. Was there anything else? I don't think so. Any credit cards? They were in my handbag, and I had my passport inside my jacket pocket. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you will have some time to look at the questions five to ten. Now listen and answer questions five to ten. Money, clothing, any personal items?、Oh, let me think. I had an umbrella. It was black, no blue, but obviously that isn't as important as the other things. No, but it all helps us identify your property and get it back to you. Anyway, I just need to ask you for some basic details about your journey. So it was yesterday, was it? That's right. In the afternoon, around two p.m., maybe two thirty. Okay, so that'd be May the thirteenth. Yes, I was heading to Highbury. That's where I live. All right, and you mentioned a passport, I think. So you were coming from the airport, I presume. Yes, and I was looking forward to getting home so much, and what with being tired and everything, I think that's why I just forgot about the case. And how were you travelling when you lost your property? I mean, what kind of transport were you using? I thought about getting the train. But that would have meant a bus journey as well, and I couldn't be bothered. So I decided to take a taxi eventually. That's where I must have left it. Well, that's good news in a way. It's more likely that a driver would have found it and handed it in. I hope so. Well, I need your personal details now. Can I have your full name, please? 
Yes, it's Lisa Doherty. I'll spell that for you. It's D O C H E R T Y. Thank you. And next, if I could have your address, the best address to send you the property, if we manage to locate it. Sure. It's number fifteen A River Road, and that's Highbury, as I said. Thank you. Just a moment. There's just one final thing. That's your phone number. I guess my mobile would be best.、Uh, hang on, I can never remember my own number. Okay, I've got it. It's o seven nine seven nine six o five four three seven. Very well. I think that's everything we need at this end. I'll have a look at the data. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. You will hear a tourist information officer explaining local walks to visitors. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fifteen. Welcome to everyone here. I hope you enjoy your stay in our village, and enjoy the local scenery. I'll tell you a bit about the forest and mountain tracks in a minute, but first, I'll just give you an idea of where everything is in the village. So, we're here in the tourist information center, and when you come out of the center, you're on Willow Lane, just opposite the pond. If you want to get to the supermarket for your supplies of food and water, go right. That's the quickest way, and then turn right at the top of Willow Lane, and it's the second building you come to, opposite the old railway station. If you're planning on doing some serious climbing, and you need some equipment, we do have an excellent climbing supply store, just five minutes walk away. Turn left once you're outside the tourist information center. Take Willow Lane all the way up to Pine Street. You want to go left along here. Then keep walking and go up Mountain Road on your right until you come to the next turning on the left. Head down there, and you'll come to the climbing supplies store. If you get to the small building that sells ski passes, you'll know you've gone too far. You also need to head to Pine Street for the museum. It's small, but well worth a visit if you're interested in the history of the village and the old gold mining industry. So, when you reach Pine Street from here, you'll see the old railway line on the other side of the road. Turn left into Pine Street, and keep going until you come to Mountain Road. And just past here, the museum will be on your left. Just behind the railway line, don't worry about crossing over the tracks. The trains stopped running through here in 1985. If you're planning on following one of the easier forest walks, you might like to hire a bicycle. To get to the hire shop, again, you need to head to Pine Street. On the left-hand side of Pine Street, you'll see the town hall. Go down the little road that you come to just before it, and you'll find the bike hire shop just behind the hall.
They have a good range of bikes, so I'm sure you'll find something that suits your needs. Last but not least, if you're hungry after a long day's trek, I can recommend our local cafe. Again, when you leave the tourist information center, turn right and follow Willow Lane until it joins Pine Street. And right opposite, on the far side of the railway tracks, is the cafe. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you will have some time to look at the questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. OK, let me tell you a little bit about the different tracks we have here. All of them start at the end of Mountain Road, and you'll find a parking lot there where you can leave your vehicles. Let's start with North Point Track. It's a gentle route through lowland forest, good for biking and probably the one for you if you have small children. There's a wooden hut where you can stay at the end of the track, but be aware that it's really just an overnight shelter, and you'll need to take your own sleeping bags and cooking equipment. Another option is the Silver River track. As the name suggests, you'd be following the river for most of the way, and you get to see some of our beautiful native birds. But the track also goes through a densely forested area. Unfortunately, the signposting isn't very good in places, and you do need good map reading skills to avoid becoming disoriented, which happens to visitors a little too frequently, I'm afraid. Valley Crossing will take you through some stunning scenery, but there are several points along the way where you'll need the level of fitness required to get over some pretty big rocks. Stonebridge is one of the shorter tracks, but very steep as it takes you up to the waterfall, and you do need to be in good condition to manage it. Lastly, the Henderson Ridge track will take you all the way to the summit of the mountain. Do bear in mind, though, that at this time of year the weather is very changeable, and if the cloud suddenly descends, it's all too easy to wander off the track. It's best to check with us for a weather report on the morning you think you want to go. On the way to the summit, there's a hotel which provides comfortable rooms and quality meals, so it's worth climbing all that. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 3.